Hey everybody, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, So everybody who listens to the podcast, I've been wanting to do this concept for a long time. I did a a version of it not too long ago, Uh, a couple episodes of the brown paper bags where we drink wine, but these three wonderful people are not gonna get served free alcohol. (laughs) Bye. I know, sorry, you're out? (laughs) Yeah. You were promised something totally different, right? You're out. Uh, (laughs) But I've always been fascinated by what happens when you bring different people together that are doing interesting things and just shoot the shit about what's going on in culture, in the game, and, and I think a lot of people are, are you know, this group specifically, I think, from what I know about them from afar, have crossovers and, and see certain things the same way, and then obviously have their unique uh, journeys and points of view, and so I've been wanting to do, you know, there's this thing that I used to do when I was first coming up in the game in Silicon Valley, where I met all the hardcore Facebooks and Twitter founders and Uber founders, and they were called jam sessions, where we would get together at these conferences at like midnight in a hotel room and for three, four hours just talk about the game, right? If we would have one tonight, we would talk about cryptocurrency, right? For sure, we did four years ago. That's why I bought Bitcoin four years ago. Mm. So you just get different ideas and thoughts about like, we would argue about who's gonna be big, who's not. And so I've been wanting to do this thing called pod sessions, podcast versions of the jam sessions. And I'm very excited. Uh, I have three phenomenal guests and, and probably one of the biggest things that I want to get out of pod sessions is also an opportunity for me as my career changes to use my platform of the attention that I'm amassing to put other people on that also sometimes have bigger audiences than me, different audiences than me, or um, are emerging and are doing interesting things that have caught my eye normally through some digital connection or the eye of somebody on my team's digital connection. So that's what we're doing. I'm super excited about it. You guys are the three that are helping me pop the cherry of pod Love sessions. It. Thank Thanks you. for being here. <laughs> and so why don't we introduce ourselves? Let's start with the ladies. So we go ahead. Hey, I'm Sweetie. I'm from LA, I'm originally from the Bay Area, and I'm an artist and recently just um, released my single, Icy Girl, and it's doing really well. And so, uh, what's really fun for me on this is that you literally DM me and you're like, yo, you're always in the room with all these dude rappers. For real. Like, Why don't you bring a girl rapper? I'm like, so yeah, right. nice. good. 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 Just, I've been trying to tell people to like it all shy. happens in the DM. <laughs> yeah. She's just like, yo, fuck you, Gary V. Like, let's get the ladies in here. I'm like, she's right. Yeah, she's yeah. right. And, and now I she's am. sitting right here. Love it. Let's keep it going. Claudia Ashray, girl with no job. Yes. Husband, I mean, not husband, wife of girl, boy with no job who works for you. Yes. Um, real name's Claudia Ashray, from New York, live in New York, went to school in New York, love New York, never want to leave. Everyone keeps telling me I should move to LA, but I would rather die. Um, that's Are it. you and Sweetie about the fight? Like, is no, that we, like, we, we had the conversation peacefully before got it, we got good. here. Yeah. I'm with you, by the way. Like, yeah. I, LA can seduce me when I'm there, like on the second day, because mm-hmm. the sun is like, fuck. Exactly. Right? And but, the trees. But it's too slow for me. Yeah. Even totally. New York's starting to get weirdly slow. I might have That's to move true. to China. It's just the traffic. <laughs> yeah. So, so wow. a lot of people listening here, between your your amazing husband, who I know very well because he works at Vayner on the influencer world, uh, the girl with no job and the boy with no job. So first of all, which account started first? Oh, mine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very important. Like, Everyone king. should know. Yes. Yeah. So girl with no job is a <laughs> monster. Is a mo- now everybody does know. Yeah. So. Girl With No Job is a monster Instagram account. And we'll get into the origins of that, but going well, you're super happy, all going oh, good. Oh, very pleased. Good. Life and you love New York. Not going well. And I love yes. New York. My yeah, man? Uh, Cypher Sounds. Yes. I also love New York. Woo-hoo! I don't want to leave. Uh, DJ, comedian, and everything in between. Yes. And uh, I don't have as many followers as Girl With No Job that I just Most noticed. Most humans and don't. It, no, but it just shrunk my, my, my ego just <laughs> yeah. severely okay. when I followed yeah. her. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get there. Yeah, I get it. You gotta achieve to something, right? Yeah, gotta have exactly. a North Star. All right, let's go back around and create the two minute origin story. Like, mm. tell me about your early days, what got you going, how'd you, how you became an artist. Uh, I played your single on repeat all the way down on my winter vacation. For real. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so, uh, um, I especially like when anytime people are talking about pasta and seafood dishes, I get excited. Okay. So I kept, okay. I kept, that was my favorite. If I was back to the old days that I used to listen to music with a uh-huh. tape and rewound, I would have <laughs> yeah. just kept hitting rewind <laughs> there. It's a lot easier now to just slide the finger back. Uh, mm-hmm. But So born and raised in LA? No, born and raised in the Bay Area. Got it. Yeah, so what took me to LA is, um, so I was writing since I was like 14 years old. Writing. Writing, like Writing. raps. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I wanted, I've been wanting to do this. Um, however, I didn't have the resources. I didn't have the plan. Yep. So um, I went to college. Yep. 
San Diego, but I was like, okay, this is a B market city. Yep. Um, I need to go to an A market. Big shout out to San Diego. That's a B market is a. I think that's a compliment. I think San Diego. I think San Diego is a C market. Keep going. <laughs> okay, well, when I was talking to people in the industry, they yeah. were like, you need to go to LA. Of course. So I wanted to go to the best um, college. Yep. Applied to USC. Got yep. in. Yep. Um, graduated. Um, still didn't have the resources, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do car wraps. That's what I was known for. Uh-huh, and I was like, I someone's that. gonna see these car wraps. Mm-hmm. Um, was doing it, a couple of them went viral. Ended up meeting my manager, and ever since then we've been rocking. He was like, you need to and record ICO. About nine months ago. Yeah, so for all of you not in the know, car wraps is like a genre that's super interesting. Like, <laughs> it just makes so much sense. Now that we have cameras yeah. and the ability to record anywhere, like, I, I don't know, I actually think my vlog is a car wrap. Like, the amount of content Daily yeah. V is that's in the back of my car is right. the majority because we're so busy. Exactly. Like, I, I, I've, I've loved following that whole scene and there's been multiple people that have popped off from car wrapping. Exactly. Did you see somebody popping and decide I'll do that too or was it just kind of? No. Oh, so um, I had I had recorded a couple in my car, and I was like, you know, consistency and familiarity is like super uh-huh. important with your viewers and your audience. So I was like, I'm just gonna stay in the and car. Are you cozy in that zone? Does it feel like a booth? Yeah, it's my booth. Mm-hmm. I think so. Right. His, na- his name is Bruce. You named your car Bruce. Bruce Respect. the booth. Yep. Mm-hmm. Girl with no job. How the yeah. hell did that happen? It happened because... Because you had no job? Well, actually, it happened because I had a job. Mm-hmm. I went to NYU. I was, like, so bored. Everyone at NYU is very career-oriented. <laughs> By the way, this whole New York narrative, the NYU part made it so much better. Yeah. yeah. I love no, it. I was like, just never like, leave. You will never leave, never no, leave like, right? like, literally never. You will die in this city. 100%. Do you I even travel outside of it? Well, I was just in Mexico, and it was beautiful and everything, but I couldn't wait to wait, get home. I get it. Yeah. It, it's Respect. just... I'm not a big traveler. Mm-hmm. I don't wander So, out of 365 that. days a year, you spend 300... 52 in New York City? 363, honestly. No. You no. went to Mexico for two days? No, I went to Mexico for four days. Okay. Um, but like, literally, literally, no joke, you're spending like nine tenths. You're, th- you're spending 350 days in a city? Yeah. And do you consider Queens and Brooklyn the city? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Respect. doesn't everyone? The five boroughs. I don't. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But you, you, you consider all those? Yeah, yeah, You yeah. don't consider Jersey the city? I mean, be that, careful that would be wrong. Be careful now, I'm a Jersey no, I'm boy. No, not saying anything bad, but that would be wrong. Okay. What about Staten Island, It's though. a different, yeah, what that about would Staten be correct. Island? It is a borough, but it's, it's a yeah, borough. not the city. <laughs> I'm not saying I spend huge amounts of time right. there, but I would definitely consider Do you consider secretly it. hate Queens? Doesn't everyone? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so what happens? So yeah, I started this blog. I got an internship in fashion PR, and this was yes. like pre Condé Nast getting sued and now having. Do you pay your interns yes. here? Yes, you should. It's the right thing to do. Everyone. I don't think people should pay anybody, but that's a whole different story. Okay. If you're giving them actual opportunity, I'll explain that later. Okay. I know it's an unpopular statement, but yes, there Tyler, I'm not paying you anymore. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. <laughs> so I got this internship. It was six years ago. It was unpaid. It was like ungodly hours. It was just horrible. Everyone was like super bitchy and like mean and skinny and like right. fashion, you know? <laughs> yes. And I was just like. I I'm the opposite of that. I'm so cool. Everyone loves me. And like, yes. it was just, I was being so put down there, you know? Right. Um, so I started this blog called Girl With A Job. It was like on Tumblr. It was like, the only way I knew how to make a website back then was on Girl Tumblr. With a Job. With a Job. And I basically, it was more like a diary. Yes. I used it as a platform to like talk shit Tumblr, about literally Tumblr was everyone. A beast. Beast. You need to look right up there. That is me investing in Tumblr. Great investment. Huge. I mm-hmm. mean, like that was like, th- that Twitter and Tumblr were a year before Facebook. Like yeah. that's what put me on. Like Tumblr is forever mm-hmm. in my heart. No, yeah. if you have Tumblr followers, you got followers everywhere. Everywhere. I agree. They're so loyal. Mm-hmm. They're so loyal. Yeah. And like as a, like a 18 year old who knew nothing about computers, like I could make a website without having to like, I don't know, have a host or like things that I know now. It was just great. As yeah. young people, like most of you are all young, but like, doesn't it feel weird that there's like 17 and 18 year olds that don't know what Tumblr is? Yeah, it's really yeah. Like the lack of Tumblr's like existence, does that fuck with you? Well, no. Okay, are you excited about Vine too? Um, yes. Me too. Okay, keep going. Very excited. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so I started this blog. It was really like a diary. Absolutely nobody read it, even like Ben. Like no one read it. You um, were dating Ben at the no, time. No, actually we weren't dating yet, so I forgive right. him for not reading it. Right, so um, what the fuck are you mad at Ben? <laughs> <laughs> just some kid living no, his it's life. it's just like an analogy for like people close to me it. were not reading I it. I get it. Yeah. Um, and I eventually got fired because I was terrible. They hated me, I hated them, and I was like so nervous that someone was gonna find my blog. Um, so I got fired. I changed it for accuracy purposes to girl with no job. Took to Instagram a long time ago when? where like the only when? person, maybe, s- I was a freshman in college, so like six, five or six years ago. Okay. Where like the only person I knew on Instagram was like Perez Hilton. Like he was like the first person yeah. on. Who? Um, That's an Rest in peace. Right yeah. Rest in peace. Oh, he's alive. No, I, I mean his, his brand. His brand. <laughs> 
<laughs> here's the good news. Perez can flip it up. In, like this is what's yeah. great about the recall. Mm-hmm. Like any, it's all about executing properly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like if you look at who's winning, like it's really funny to yeah. look what Will Smith's doing. Will Smith is about to take over because he's vlogging. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like he got yeah. tired of not being as relevant anymore. Make it 25 million, 30 million a film is exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like, once you've got money, you want relevance yeah. again. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and you know what it takes? Humility, that's why he's a beast. Mm-hmm. He's humble Super enough to beast. do it, right? I think Perez, like Vine, I'm making a prediction. It, it was put in ethos. Vine 2 is gonna be the platform that Perez rises like a fucking phoenix. <laughs> I really hope not. I've had enough. Respect. Like since high school, I'm done. Well, of course, because you read his blog every day. Every he day dom- in high school. He dominated 2009 he to dominated. 2012. And how you can have such success and just like end up where you are is just like so Where upsetting. is he? Well, he just released a video on YouTube saying that he was an addict and he didn't say to what. Really? He said not to drugs or alcohol, but Zan? he just has an addictive personality and I was just waiting for Herp? him to say what he's addicted to and he if didn't he say. If he gets a face tattoo, I'm gonna lose my shit. <laughs> All right, let's keep it going. Yeah, got fired. Girl with no job. Yep. Built a brand on on social. Really, the point of getting on social was like to drive traffic to this website that I had. Understood. Whereas I kind of just fell into like entertainment culture on social and never even really picked back up with the blog. I just fell into of course. like building a brand. What was your first pop off moment? Like when did like what um, happened? What did you post? I posted a. Um, it was like a picture, it was a Snapchat actually, of a girl, like you know girls put their thighs like up on the beach and like they look yep. like hot dogs? Yes, um, <laughs> hot dog legs. Yeah, and so it was like actual, like what you think you see, and then it was actually a girl's fingers like pretending to be her thighs, and it was not a beach, it was like her computer and she was at work, you know? <laughs> yes. Like Instagram versus reality. Yes, and that just went. Yeah. And away you went. Yes, away I went. I got like 6,000 followers in one day. And were you, did you know Ben at this point? Uh, yes, I did now. Dating. Dating. And did you text him and be like, what the fuck? Yeah, no, we were dying. We were just like on my phone scrolling and like refreshing. And what was he What was he doing with his life at this point? This is just me prying. We were still in college, right? Ben? I think I, think I was working. Okay, I don't remember. Maybe I was a senior. All right, it's yeah. too much of you, Ben. Next. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell yeah. us your story, my man. All right, um, from the Bronx originally, moved to Long Island in high school. That's where I learned how to speak white. And then, um, <laughs> how quickly did you pick it up? Uh, very quickly. Very quickly. It. It's easy to pick up. Well, here's what white people love. This is today. Yes. The wire. Yes. The air horn. Burr, 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 burr. Yep. And white people love the R. Kelly Ignition remix. Okay. okay. I love <laughs> I know. I, I know. love that song. Like, I'm if I do a white that wedding. That is the most accurate thing. <laughs> that song, I once played on repeat the entire drive from Wine Library, the liquor store, to Atlantic City and back. <laughs> do you love that song? Yeah, I like it. You like That's it. That's a you universal don't love song. It, right? It's universal. It's, it's no, universal. but I'm saying in the hood, it's it's okay. It's a good R. Kelly song. No, it's but well respected in the white community. Love it. <laughs> What's the hood's favorite R. Kelly song? Oh, there's too many. It's there's too some, many. There's give me, one, give one. me one. I'm putting there's you There's one right called on the Real Talk. Well, everybody loves Where, Real Talk. You know Real Talk? Of course. I don't. R. Kelly? Of course. Now, everybody doesn't know that. No, I agree. Why? That's Why? A, you must have grown up around. So you, I grew up black with people. Yeah, I went to Mount Ida College, ninety-seven percent black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, real talk is like a deep, deep cut. No hook. At the end, he yells out, "Melvin, <laughs> pull up the car." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, so um, so I learned uh, to white. DJ. And I learned white. I learned mm-hmm. to DJ. I met. Did you get good at tennis? No, no, no. Okay, no, no. you never, Just, you never went, you never not went that deep. way. You no, didn't go not deep long. No sport. I don't do any sports. Got it. Mm-hmm. That's period. Why. None. You're not athletic. You now hate me. No, I don't. Do you like sports? <laughs> Makes me like no, you. I don't like now sports. Now I hate you. Keep going. But I don't, <laughs> not being athletic, no problem. Hating I was talking sports, to my problem. dad died when I was young, and mm-hmm. I was talking to this other comedian that whose dad also died when he was young. I think that has a big part of it. Like could, you probably could like somebody get him. You know what's funny? My dad worked every minute. Influenced nothing of mine because we were immigrants. I never saw him. Yeah. It just were kids in my neighborhood were thrown a Nerf yeah. football. Like there's a million. Va- you could have a cousin that was. You know how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nonetheless, but that's, so you, that's, but you that's went where into the music, music came yeah, from. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So of I got into super heavy into music. Um, I started DJing for with this guy DJ Riz. He introduced mm-hmm. me to Funkmaster Flex. Of course. I start interning at the radio station in '97. Worked for in years. In 1997, a hot 97? Yeah. yeah. That's, I was three yeah, years right? amazing. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it's super meta. So uh, years and years and years worked for no money and just kept climbing, climbing, climbing. Eventually got uh, the morning show, yep. which lasted seven years. Which and was a huge run for you. Yeah, I was at the radio station for 17 years. In between, I'm doing a DJ for Little Kim, uh, A&R at Star Trek, which is Pharrell's label, A&R at Rockefeller. Like I've done a lot of things in between. It's funny you bring up a little kid this morning. Literally this morning, think I sometimes think about my day when I'm like brushing my teeth, showering, just thinking about it. Like I was like, you know, I was thinking about you, like mm-hmm. talking about like the the female rapper thing, and I was like, man. 
there was a point where I think Foxy Brown was literally my favorite artist in the world I for like that Foxy. that little 48 seconds of that summer when <laughs> yeah. Pac and Biggie were dead and yeah. I was like fucked up and like fuck it, Foxy's my number one. Mm-hmm. Sorry, anyway, yeah. just ran, just, <laughs> That's good. just ran when you said Kim, because that was the battle at the time. Those two was kind of like fun. So nonetheless. So yeah, in between there, uh, I DJ on the Chappelle show. Mm-hmm. I mean Dave Chappelle. Um, then I'm funny on the radio. So people start saying, you're funny, you're funny. So I was like, all right, people keep saying funny. Let me try to conquer this but, comedy But on the radio, world. and I, I've listened to your stuff through the years, like, it was more like of an improv funny. Like, you were yeah. funny off the hip. Oh, not man. like, I'm going to do a set. Right, yeah. But, but people kept saying, you're like, should I do a well, set? Well, I just started doing comedy as to make money. Like, I'm going to produce a comedy show. I didn't think I was going to do comedy. I, I was just it. like, people keep thinking I'm funny, associate oh, my name with funny? funny. Oh, you think I'm funny? I'll show you how funny I am. Yeah. <laughs> Give me your money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I did this night called Don't Get Gas. It was one of the hottest comedy nights for like five, six years. And from that, I started like doing stand-up. Yep. And then at one point, I was just like, okay, am I going to do this for real? And I left the radio station. And at, you know, 39, 38, with a pregnant wife, decided to start a whole new career. Good for you, man. And here I am. And how long has that been going on now? I mean, I've been doing stand-up, let's say, eight years, 10, eight years. But like for real, like where's my bread and butter, like four or five years. All right, let's go back around the table. This is a segment that I just made up five seconds ago called what am, I, what am I Obsessed With? Like what is happening right now in culture or end or your life that you were obsessed with, sweetie? I am absolutely obsessed with social media. Like the whole fucking thing? Yes. Okay, let's rank them in order of your obsession. Number one, every, every other app has to die. You can only live there. It is? Instagram. Mm. Okay. Okay, I was gonna say. Okay, so <laughs> look, she hesitated for a second. This is what happens. I love like, I love Instagram, but I'm starting to love Twitter mm-hmm. because I'm figuring out what works there. It's all mm-hmm. about figuring out what works mm-hmm. for different um, mm-hmm. social media. So like you found this new room. It's like you found the den. You've always yes. been in the kitchen, but you're like, wait, the den's kind of fucking mm-hmm. cool. Like, what exactly. can I do in here? Mm-hmm. So Twitter's emerging. Twitter, yeah, Twitter's emerging. What else? Um. That's about it. So those two. Mm-hmm. So you're obsessed with Twitter and Face and excuse and me, Instagram, Instagram. And, mm-hmm. and Twitter. Definitely. Period. Okay. Yeah. Good. I mean, no I'm job, obs- girl. Yeah, I'm obsessed with everything. I could talk about literally anything for but till the end of time. But, but, but the number one thing that you were obsessed with right now, uh, like stories and live streaming, like in real time content. You know. Yes. Like I use stories more than I actually post on Instagram these days. Yes. Just because it feels super natural for me, because yes. I was like I started on Snapchat a yes. while ago. Yes. Um. So just like letting people know what I'm up to at all hours of the day. Yeah. Yes. And then seeing how many people look at it and what's right. going and on. Right. And like obsessing over like the verified accounts that watch my stories. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. Yeah. Verified makes it better. Yeah. Of yeah. course. That blue check is fucking status. Money. It is. The amount of money hooking up and other random shit that has been happening because of that blue check mm-hmm. is fucking batshit crazy. Jeez. People are starting to abuse it though. Yeah. Meaning? Like getting themselves verified when I just don't feel like they deserved it. Well, if 90% shouldn't be verified. <laughs> <laughs> what are you excluding Absolutely. Us? Obsessed I with. Love, I'm obsessed with all the dope TV shows that are out right now, and I want to make, make, make TV shows. You want to make TV yeah, shows. Yeah. So, I what's your do. number one dopest, freshest TV show? I mean, like, I can't yeah. break it down. I break it you're down in categories. Down. Nope. No, I'm saying like, no, I got it. You can. I'll give you the airtime to say every one of them, but then you're gonna have to have final fucking yeah. four and pick one. Uh, mm. Right now, like Handmaid, Handmaid's Tale. Yep. It's sick. Up. You know what I'm saying? But then I also love stand-up specials. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like well, uh, Netflix, Tom Segura. Yep. Yeah, Netflix, Netflix is, is right? killing it's, it. You know what's so funny? It's just pattern recognition. It's exactly what HBO did in its early days. Like comedy is always a pillar. Yeah. Just like sports, just like music, mm-hmm. fashion. Comedy is such a pillar of our society. And what I love right now about Instagram, and you've got to give a, a, a shout out to Vine because comedy absolutely played yes. out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and definitely, obviously, now Netflix and podcasts podcasts mm-hmm. for that matter. Yep. I think for a lot of people, comedy has reemerged as an obvious pillar. Yeah. Whereas if like, for example, you guys talk in your age group, like seven, 10 years ago, like six, seven, five, five six, seven, eight years ago, it wasn't like comedy was that in our face. No. You know, like you go back yeah. to MySpace with Dane Cook 
and the, you know the tail end of Adam Sandler CDs and like the Jerky Boys on you know yeah. I'm old as shit. So no, like bring that up. Like but like there's these moments where, where whether it's comedy or sports or music they pop up in reminding us how important I think comedy is having a moment. Yeah, comedy yeah. used to be a super slow burn. You had to be on the road for 15 like years. So traditional to get recognized. Yeah, and now there's so many different ways to see it and so many different ways to do it. It's definitely popping off. Do you feel like, do you feel native to doing comedy on Instagram? Does that come natural to you? No. Do you no, want I it to? Love, I struggle with that because I really love live stand-up in a club. And I feel that's getting overshadowed by people doing it on social media. Do you feel like, do you feel like, so it's funny for me when I hear that, I feel like that everything is tried and true. Like it will, ne- like to me I think it's, addition to. Yes. Like I think oh. I, I think we're I think we're having way too many conversations of and you know, or instead right. of and, right? Yeah, I mm-hmm. agree. Like like ever like I think one of my favorite things about young people is that everything's in play now. So I, I love hip hop. It's crazy to me that there was only one move in hip hop when I grew up in the right. early to mid nineties, which was if you're not hard, you're out. Right. Yeah. And now I literally think like like Lil Yachty would have got his face beat in right. in four seconds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 like you can't dress like you can't do that. Now you can do everything, anything, mm-hmm. right. anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, th- as long as you've got skills, which I think is important. All right, fine, good. Girl with no job. What is your ambition going forward? I think you're in a very unique spot from my perspective. Okay, you have a lot of leverage because mm-hmm. you have a big audience. Yeah. You are, uh, we've mentioned Tumblr, we've mentioned Snapchat. Mm -hmm. I think you're, you know, I'm giving you smart cred off your husband being smart and I'm sure he learned everything from you. So you're clearly (laughs) smart. So where do you sit on the, hmm, paranoia of, is Instagram gonna be the most important thing for the next 12 months, 24 months, 48 months, Mm -hmm. 72 months? How else am I spreading this yeah. out? What am I doing with this? You know, how are you thinking about this unique moment where 99% of the people listening are trying to get to a place where they could live mm-hmm. on the back of these platforms? You are in that, I don't know anything, even through yeah. Ben, I don't know, but I know what your account is, yeah. which means to me that you easily could live mm-hmm. your life with that as a media property, but you're also smart enough to know there's a vulnerability, and yes. so many people have been burned on being one-dimensional, just yep. YouTube, one-dimensional, just Twitter, MySpace, we mentioned it earlier. Like, Tila Tequila should still be relevant yeah. if she was able to be relevant Mm-hmm. in every sea change, right. people get emotional and say, well, this is the thing, I don't like this new thing, but that right. new thing's gonna kill you unless you embrace yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah, and like, I literally wake up every day and I'm like afraid of the fact that I don't know what the cool new app is, and anytime I meet like a 12 year old who knows who I am, I'm like, what do you do on your phone? Like when you're laying in bed, what apps do you like, what don't you like? Mm-hmm. Um, and for a while, I like lived in fear that Instagram was on its way down and that Snapchat was where I was at, so I put like so much time mm-hmm. and resources into building a successful Snapchat, which now just bit me in the because I had a successful Snapchat and like nobody cares anymore. Why? Why? So are your numbers showing you that nobody cares anymore? Actually, my numbers are still really strong. Just from like a like a cultural cool, relevance yeah, like a cool point? perspective. I just don't think that people are thinking that Snapchat is cool anymore. And as a user, like I'm so loyal to Snapchat. I think it put a face to my brand. Yes. And my brand wouldn't be the same if it weren't for Snapchat. So anytime I feel like if I see something I want to capture, my hand literally just goes to Snapchat. And that's starting to change because yeah. I'm recording more on Instagram stories now than I am on Snapchat because there's a bigger audience for me it's like a built-in audience it already exists and it's just they're doing such a better job like for me as i use it as a broadcasting opportunity snapchat does not help creators whatsoever find new audiences instagram is like putting my stories on the suggested page like it's helping me find users who would have no idea who i am I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Who would have no idea? Who I am. <laughs> Just for he everybody, you know, this is a podcast, so you didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. She looked at her phone. Something clearly was on the phone, either a notification <laughs> or a note, <laughs> and you know, just I'm not good with that. Yeah, no. So, building if I out- could snap my fingers right now and say, with all the leverage you have now. Mm-hmm. What would be the number one next move that's outside of your norm of being a content creator in? Okay, there's it, it, there's two. It requires a, a one A and then step two because I need to just build out my digital portfolio a little bit more before I want to move to like traditional media. Yes. So I want to have like a bigger and better YouTube, a bigger and better everything. Yes. So I'm more well rounded so that by the time I get to like where like a dream scenario is like a young edition of The View and where we talk about things that young people care about, not that like yep. Rosie O'Donnell cares about. Mm. I need to have like a full portfolio Do of where people Rosie's know me. Do you think Rosie's old? 
Um, I love Rosie. I think she's so smart. I just, I have, I don't know why I, the view is always my example for what's wrong in modern media, but like yes. I'm a 23 year old woman and I yes. don't feel like I'm represented by the view. No. But and it's I don't not think, for you though. It's not for, but I don't think I'm represented in, in daytime. What about the real? It's close. It's better. Okay. But I don't feel like I'm represented in modern media, especially daytime media, where there are people my age or close to my age talking about the, things that I give a shit about. The mm. overt respect for linear television in this room is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Next, sweetie. Like, what? What do we want? Do we? Are you in the mindset? Uh, you know, you know that you're just eventually you and the team are going to put out the song that changes the narrative of your career. Is that where your mind's at? Um, and then, like, what do you mean? In like, that? are you in the mindset of like, I got to keep working on the work, putting out good projects, and that inevitably one of those. Like to me, it's amazing to me how interesting the music game is to me. Mm-hmm. Like, I struggle with with finding a way that people pop outside of either the album or the single song being, it's a very its a very straightforward game, which is right. that is the moment that changes so many things. It's either that hook, that song, yeah. or that or that cameo, mm-hmm. or that album. Are you, are you just thinking hardcore, let me be about my craft, let me keep being better at my craft, let me keep putting out great songs and, and I'll take it from there? Um. I would say that's one of the factors. Yep. However, um, what's constantly on my mind is marketing. Yes. Because that song or that hook or that whatever it is, I need to make sure that I'm always capitalizing on my audiences to yes. ensure that when I do release that, it yes. touches a wide range of people yes. so that it can pop off. Because without that, without marketing, like without thinking about that every day, you just you're missing the opportunity of like expanding your audience. And you're at the mercy of other people. Exactly. Yep. But if you're, so like if I'm always thinking about like widening my range of whoever's like viewing what, yep. like my work, yes. that's, 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 an, that's the number one thing on my brain. Understood. Because if you're not doing that, then you might. How much music can we expect from you in the next 12 months, gut feel? You may not have the answer for that, but intuitively, how much music can we expect from you? What do you think? I would say mm, maybe two or three projects. And are projects like six, Albums? seven, eight, nine songs? Or three songs? Um, I would say mm, 10 to 12 songs. Got it. Okay. Three projects in the next year? Two to three. Wow. Okay. That, you, that, you, nowadays, you, that's not even a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's I mean, a good my, amount. Back in the day where you put an album out every year and a half, two years, now music is flying out. Well, we have the so, microwave generation. No, I know, but that's why you that, also you have no pay fucking some friction. Like yeah. you should. I, I'm the other. I mean, my big thing is as many songs as you have in you, you need to get out yeah. because you're not at the mercy of somebody at the radio at the station label, or MTV yeah. or the label. Like this is phenomenal. Yeah. Like throw that shit. Up. Like if like this is the most democratized music has ever Absolutely. been. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. There's some kid right now listening like in Ottawa, Canada, who's gonna put something on SoundCloud that's 40 seconds away from popping. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like when Icy Girl went viral, my mm-hmm. song, um, someone in Dubai sent me the picture of them on the beach with my song. S- and instant. I'm just like, like, what the hell? Yeah. Once you press that button and it's the so music, crazy. you press send, the music goes across the world instantly. Exactly. But like I remember back in the day, and I don't want to sound old, but I'm old like you. <laughs> <Yep>. Um <laughs> I used to go to Japan and we would play, I'd play a lot of 90s hip hop because they were so far behind. Yep. And then as I'm watching the technology grow, they're, they're like, up oh, on the song shit, that came DMC. out today. <laughs> yeah, it's No, crazy. I get it. The whole world music just changed. Everything has changed. Information is moving at a yeah. totally different level. But that's why you're saying you're so into marketing mm-hmm. because you know the music is only half of the battle. Exactly. So many people put out music, you have to be on top of that other half where like back in the day, the artists were just artists. They just made, you know, there was some who were more entrepreneurial but they just made good music and then they had hopefully it would go now you're still on top of it no because audiences and fans aren't interested in the artist who who is a typical celebrity right they're interested in the artist who is like your everyday person right. and, and who is accessible yeah mm-hmm. yeah who do you want to most work with give me two or three names just for fun like work with mm-hmm. as business or musically or whatever you want um, I'd I'd want to say I'd want to work with Dr. Dre only mm-hmm. because I worked I I worked I saw his documentary um, which was crazy with Jimmy Ivey yeah. and they're mad scientists. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Drake. I like what he's done with OVO and mm-hmm. his branding. He's constantly marketing. And you um, know what? Real quick, I apologize. I think what Drake is really smart with, and I thought it was one. I think one of the best moves of the year mm-hmm. was the humility he decided to show in the commercial with his dad. 
right? Like people, you have to understand, like people, like this is all high school. This will always be high school. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like the second you figure out somewhere for most people between sophomore and junior year of high school where you're like, oh shit, right. If I make fun of myself and I laugh at myself with my friends, they'll stop picking on me. Mm-hmm. Like understanding the moves, mm-hmm. I think Drake, understanding of anthropology and psychology of like, if I put a national commercial for my beverage on where I get clowned and my dad gets the girl, like that is smart. There's not a lot of people who have the humility and the confidence. Especially in hip hop. Cause you were saying Correct. like everyone wants to be, Correct. they want to be hard. Correct. That's why Drake wins. Cause he 100%. shows hundred like percent. And he's hot so. And <laughs> helps. Hello. <laughs> Is, when Drake's with his hardcore beard, do you think he's soup is hotter? Like what? Okay. What Drake is hot? Because the I feel Drake, like Drake, like I feel like Drake has Drake a hot is the Drake. American dream. Like he was on Degrassi, yep. and I was like That's the, the number Canadian one Canadian dream. Okay. There's not but a like, fucking American that knows what Degrassi is. Everyone know. knows what Degrassi is because of him. But no, I prop- no, 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 no. Why do you know what Degrassi no, was? Yeah, everyone was watched it. Yeah, yeah. It was like the dark show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where you learned what like bad teen. things were. Yeah. Yes, what were you yes. watching it on? Like Nick at Night or yeah, something? Yeah, literally. <laughs> All right, keep going. Uh, what were we saying? He's the dream. He's the American dream. Like he just went from that. Do you know any of the other kids on Degrassi? No. And now mm. Drake is like, Drake. I met no, someone. One name wonder. No, yeah, but I you, always remember the girl with the thong. Yeah. Do you know her name? No. <laughs> <laughs> My point. What uh what's the Big North Star for you in the short term. Um, What's okay. the next thing you'd want to have? So what I did, I kind of left music, yep. started doing this comedy thing. Yep. But what I realized and what I discovered is that combining them, I'm creating my own lane. So I combine my hip hop friends yep. and all my history yep. with comedy. Yep. So I do an improv show yep. at UCB where I get hip hop artists to come tell real yep. life stories. And then me and a bunch of improvisers make up a whole show on the spot. I love that. You know what I'm saying? And then yep. when I do a Dave Chappelle I DJ, like when we did Radio City, we did yep. it almost a whole month. I remember. I DJ, but I I'm cracking jokes while I'm DJ. I went. So my job, my my goal now, because no one else can DJ and do stand-up. And if they're out there, yeah, I'm going to slice Stop. your neck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but like, no, like, I'm not the greatest comedian. I'm a very good DJ. Combining it, no one's in my lane. I love and it. And make my own path. I love it. What can I do for you? Let's go back around the other way. You first. Man, um, I... I would say help me get to as many followers as she has, but you already do that because I watch all your videos and learning every day. How'd you come across it? Do you remember? Your stuff? Mm -hmm. Just on Instagram. Just people posting all your stuff. And what kills me about you, what I love, is when someone catches you in the hallway or after you speak, speak or something and they ask you the question and you give them the straightforward answer and they like blank look <laughs> and like they want like this trick and you're like no get in the trenches and work your ass off four years no ten years you know what I'm saying and just keep going they're like yeah but how do you, you no 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 I answered you already I really, I really do need a yeah but t-shirt yeah because <laughs> that's usually the answer to almost everything I say yeah but yeah and it's like dude he told you the answer like I love that straightforwardness I appreciate it yeah Girl with no job, what can I do for you? <clears throat> well, I have, do you know Andy Cohen? Yes, I know Andy Cohen. I would love to also know Andy Cohen. Okay. Just like a personal favor. Love it. Um, and I would also just love Tyler, to- Tyler, text Eric Wattenberg. Stop. Let's set it up. <laughs> yes, coffee or drinks. <laughs> Um, I Which would, would you prefer? Drinks, obviously. I flourish <laughs> what would you, with a drink. What would you, what would you order? Oh, um, it depends where we go. I would want to come off as like a lady, but also yes. like a cool. So probably like a like a vodka soda, you know. Got it. What mm-hmm. do you think Andy would order? Oh, for sure, like an old fashioned or like a whiskey. Oh, he drinks whiskey. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and who is Andy's favorite music artist? John Mayer. Very good. Keep going. Um, now we will actually introduce yes, you. Yes, we need. I, I would love to sit with you for thirty minutes. Yes. And just like discuss the social landscape. Like I'm fairly certain I know what's going on yes. in the digital space, but like yes. maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Um, it'd be you want to just triple check. Yeah, like I just okay. want to double check just, that I'm doing everything what about right. Triple check? <laughs> yeah, like triple check. Ben's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sweetie, what can I help you with? Two things. Go ahead. So I've seen the interview you did with A Boogie. Yes. And I saw you mention Captain Crunch. Yes. I want to do something with them. You love Captain Crunch? I love Captain Crunch. Every black kid oh, loves Captain oh, Crunch. Oh, 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 <laughs> Wait, is this true? Every black girl loves Captain Crunch? Every black yeah. kid. Kid. Every, everybody loves yeah, Captain no, Crunch, period. Us too. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The Long, <laughs> the, the Long Island whites love Captain love Crunch. Love Captain Crunch. You know, okay, like you understood. Mike Boyd, let's put that on the docket. 
Yeah, I'd you love have a to second do that. thing. Second thing, um, I want to learn how you built your team. I love the interview you did with A Boogie. I feel like you shed so many gems, and um, I feel like building the correct team around you is really important. We're like expanding, like just by the as so the day let me, goes. So let me, you know, while I'm wrapping up, and I apologize, everybody's gonna feel it that I'm like wrapping up because I got the entire company in four minutes that I have to address, and so I'm gonna <laughs> bounce out of here. But this is a good thing to end with because I think everybody listening will get value out of this, so I appreciate the last thing you said. There's several things that matter in building a team. Number one, the biggest mistake people make is they think people work for them instead of them working for that per team member. I think the biggest reason I've had success is I genuinely think I work for Tyler and Jake and Tyler and D-Rock. Mm. It's my responsibility as the North Star of the last line of defense to create the framework for them to flourish, not for them to like be at my beg and call and I'm the leader. And so it's a really interesting mindset but I think you start building actual teams when everything that's fucked up is your fault as the A, the number one, mm -hmm. and that everything that's working is shared with them. So for everything that's broken with us, I take on with me. It's not Andy or D-Rock or Tyler's fault, it's my fault, mm -hmm. and everything that's working is a lot me, I believe that, mm -hmm. but I also think a lot of them picking up on those nuances, that's number one. Number two, all three of you have the following amazing opportunity, and I mentioned it early and it's really ironic with the girl no job story. I believe we're living in an incredible time. I believe that you're, if you're a young, here, let me use you as the example. If you were a 14 year old, if you're an 18 year old young woman that has enormous aspirations to be in the music business, mm -hmm. that interning for you and the team for six months and not getting paid, mm -hmm. and I, I know we talked about it earlier, yeah. but if it's for somebody who's got something going on, and, and honestly, anybody who's bigger than you, and, and whether that's more albums sold, more songs downloaded, more, more experience, what have you, but ever, back to the Dubai thing, all three of you have, on a terrible day, 100 psychotic fans, and not psychotic, weird, bad, I mean all in, fuck with you heavy, yeah. mm -hmm. they're all about you. Of those 100 people, I'm gonna say it for me too, it's not a big number, I mean people that are like in Portland, Oregon right now that if you DM'd them and said I want you to follow me around, they would be in the room right now and photography me and video me and mm -hmm. post edit me and make more, they would rip their arm off, get on a plane and fly and be part of your team. The fact that in the same way anybody can pop now, anybody can make music, that you can build a team before you have the finances to afford the team because it's an even trade. It's Love an it. even trade. Like, Does the job. government Do you know see how many, it that way though? What? Does the government see it that way? Well listen, listen like, yeah, isn't it, you have to abide by laws and if there's, right. a, if there's a state law, like I would want that, but I think there's a minute, because it's under the Vayner world. Right. As a human, I don't know, right. and consult your lawyer, but like, <laughs> like the reality is, is that here's my thing. The amount of women that aspire to be you right now, like I know a lot of them, mm -hmm. right? They would, I don't know what else to tell you. I genuinely believe that Lisa Schwartzman, She's right? totally Jewish, 100%. Right? In <laughs> Milburn fucking New Jersey mm -hmm. right now, will get way more fucking value for working for free for you yep. for six months well, she's than 99.9% .9 of the shit she could be doing. I totally agree, and if well, she wants that, to email me, That has fine. to play out. Yeah. You have to understand, guys, in 1947, going to college wasn't the right thing to do. Right. It was getting a vocational skill. Like, shit changes. Mm -hmm. not, you wanna hear something crazy? Not only do I think in 20 years, the version of you is not gonna pay, I think the person's gonna pay you for the right to even be in your circle. Well, she should. I think so, okay. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, do you know how many fucking people who want to be exactly what you can teach them yeah. are gonna pay $4,000 for some bullshit fucking course totally. right now or some like, so building a team. First, you work for them. Period, end of story, from now to the end, till you put that fucking star in Hollywood on the ground in the cement, you work for them. It's a big mind shift and most people don't get it and that's why most people don't fucking win. Mm. Number two, Take advantage of the moment. There's a lot of fucking kids trying to build up their comedy. Oh, I've, built, I've built interns who are now stars. Stars. Who came from my camp. I get it. So, so I just, it, it, they're out there. They'll I do think it. That, that's the other thing. Uh, and, and literally, it's like an Instagram story or Instagram post or a tweet of like looking for five hustlers. Like, I don't have much to pay right now, but I'll show you the world, I'll show you the insight. It's real. It's very, very, very real. And for everybody listening, you know, uh, some of you, 
uh, don't have the money and you think you can't compensate and you think you're doing the wrong thing, if your intent is right, so the reason I'm never scared of paying minimum wage or having a resident or an intern is I know that I'm always capable of settling the score. If they're so fucking remarkable, if they do so much greater than what they got paid, I can always do something down the line. And right. if you know you're up to something and you've got something going on, mm-hmm. you can always settle the score in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. So if you have the right intent, I'm not trying to steal from them. Oh, right. yeah. I'm trying to get my value. Good relationships are when both people get value. Right. right. The end. All right, one last it. thing you can leave them with and I gotta go. One last thing for everybody listening. What should they know? My, what, should, what do you look, want? Do you want them to follow? You said it all. What, me, what me personally, yes. I don't know how anyone else did it. I know how I did it. I get in the room. I work for free. I show my value. Then people don't want me to leave. Leverage. That's always how I do it. Where can people find you? Uh, at Cypher Sounds. C I P H A in the word sounds. Please. Oh, at True TV. I got a new show. On True TV, <laughs> yeah. I forgot, I'm sorry, I got Listen, a new comedy show on True TV. Girl Thanks, with Jamal. No Job, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. Claude with No Job, you know, building my personal brand. Respect. Uh, doing a live show for my podcast, doing a live show at Caroline's. Just look me up, you know? I'm okay. everywhere. Um, sweetie, S-A-W-E-E-T-I-E, um, Instagram and Twitter, and you know, car wraps to doing my first show in Turkey, Istanbul, next wow. week, so nice. whatever you can do out there, um, kids, <laughs> social media, take advantage of it. I wow. love it. Guys, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Podcast, uh, please leave uh, some social comments for me, feedback to what you think about the format. I'm excited as fuck as this. I got lucky, all three of them did their thing. This was good, this mm-hmm. flowed. We might have to take this on tour. Like on Anderson road. and Andy have their little thing. Like, I know, it's I, too. I mean, the four of us in Carnegie, like. Oh no, murder. Murder, murder, murder. See ya.